And welcome to the channel. Carrie here with Homestead Howe and the Carnivore Diet Documentary. And I'm pleased to have Emily Penton on the channel today. I've uh, been looking forward to talking to you. Emily, how are you doing? Hi, great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to talk to you. Yeah, likewise. I, I was mentioning I watched your video. Um, I was just re-watching it before this. And you have just an incredible story. You've been doing carnivore a long time. Maybe if we could start out, could you tell us maybe a little bit about yourself and, and how you heard about carnivore, how you found carnivore? Yeah, uh, let me first say that if it didn't happen to me, I wouldn't believe any of my story. So anybody who's out there going, yeah, yeah, she's full of it. I, I'm right there with you. I totally get it. Um, but uh, I suffered from uh, debilitating mental illness. And uh, it wasn't just like, oh, you know, I'm a little depressed because I don't have the extra money to buy the shoes I want. Like it was like leveled me and suicidal ideation. Like I don't want to wake up tomorrow. Um, I'm worthless. And it got to the point where I actually had to stop working and I was essentially homeless. I had to move in with my mother at the age of 40. Um, and it was just, it was devastating. You know, I, I didn't have any hope. I was on a cocktail of medications. Um, at the most I was on 900 milligrams of lithium, 80 milligrams of Prozac, 80 milligrams of Adderall just to get out of bed every day. And it wasn't like, I was like, dun, 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 I'm on Adderall. It was like, okay, I'm here. And my name's Emily. I'm good. <laughs> and if I didn't have the Adderall, I was in bed, like totally leveled. Um, and anyway, so long story short, I, uh, I basically didn't have any hope. And my brother reached out to me and my brother's not really a nice, you know, guy. He's kind of a prickly pear. And he sent me this information he had heard from Sean Baker and from Jordan Peterson and Michaela Peterson. And I, I really, I can't explain it to you, Carrie, except for that it was a knowing. It was like a divine intervention. It was just like a, here's the answer, go do this now. And as soon as I heard about carnivore, I was just like, okay. And it was February 24th of 2019. And I went overnight from uh, eating cookie dough and ice cream and donuts and pizza and beer and wine and all the things to animal meat and animal fat. And that was it. And then thankfully, uh, eventually, uh, I, was I would say in April of 2019 was my last bipolar episode. Bipolar was the mental illness I was suffering from. And that was a miracle. Like you don't get over bipolar disorder. Um, and then thankfully I was able to go back to work full time in June, tapered off all my psych meds with my psychiatrist. Don't do that on your own. And um, the craziest part is in the middle of the beginning of all this was that I was hospitalized. So a logical person would say, hmm, I started this all meat diet and then now I'm hospitalized. Uh, maybe I shouldn't do this. But actually what carnivore did was it kind of pulled back the curtain to reveal what was underneath the surface. And that was multiple sclerosis. And I soon couldn't walk without an assistive device. And I had delayed and slurred speech. And um, again, I had mental illness and then multiple sclerosis. And I was like, I'm done. I'm going to the psych ward. I'm killing myself or I'm going to the nursing home. But that inner knowing kept telling me, keep eating meat, keep eating fat. Animal fat was huge because if you think about it, the the myelin sheath is what's deteriorated in MS. And I needed that fat to rebuild that. And my last MS symptom was May 9th of 2019. And I haven't had any symptoms ever since of MS or bipolar disorder. And it doesn't make sense to me. Wow. That's crazy. 
I, it's uh, it really hits home when I hear you when I watched your video and I hear you say it now too is just the hopelessness you had. It's like when you get into that level of depression. Can you describe it at all? Because I have trouble describing it because I, I had clinical suicidal depression for eight years. I was on every antidepressant, so really hits home for me. I it, I I feel for you, and I don't I don't even know the extent that you went to, but. It was tough for me because you'd have family members and loved ones and they, they just don't get it. No matter how much you explain it, they don't get it. And it's just like, oh, go for a walk or just stop stop being so anxious about that. Just stop thinking about it. And you can't like, I, I, I guess I don't want to get too dark, but did, are you able to describe that? Or were you able yeah. to convey that to everyone, how hopeless you were? Yeah, because actually I have my master's in clinical counseling. So I practice as a therapist and it was just like, I would have clients come in and I would be able to resonate. Like I would be able to relate with what they're saying because what it is, is actually a completely different lens that you see everything through. Hmm. For instance, if someone were to say, it's a nice day outside. If you're suffering from mental illness with bipolar depression, bipolar disorder or depression, anxiety, you don't hear them say it's a nice day outside. You hear them say it's a nice day outside. Why aren't you out there? You should be washing the car. Why didn't you mow the lawn? What are you doing? Why are you inside? They didn't say that, but that's what we hear. That's what we see. And everything is, is literally seen through that, that distorted lens. And, and it's real. It's like our reality. It's it, we really believe this world of depression and anxiety and it's not true, but we don't know that because we don't see it through their lens yes. and they're just able to stay on top of everything and they're fine. And we're just like, oh my gosh, like the world's coming to an end. I like how you put it that way because I thought it was real. You thought it was real. That's hard for people to wrap their brain around. Um, I saw this movie a while ago and I've, I've been learning more about people with schizophrenia. Yeah. And it's it, some of the stuff that people like that think is just like, what? Like you're, you're seeing things, you're hearing things. You're like, no, that's clearly not there, but they would bet everything their entire life. That is there. They're seeing that they're hearing that. And it's, it's hard to comprehend, but I think you're right with depression. It's that same way. It's just, you can't see it any other way. Um, Wow. So, so four years or so you've been carnivore now. Yep. yep. And what is it like? Like, has it, everyone I talked to about carnivore, first of all, they're like, that's crazy. Like you said, like I said, um, I'm on, I just hit six months. So I got a long way to go before you, but everyone says it's crazy. It's not sustainable. Um, how has it been for you for four years? Have you had any issues roadblocks has it been sustainable um no i haven't had any issues or roadblocks um because i i don't play like i i just i i have touched misery and i have a very vivid uh memory of that torture and so i, I will do nothing ever to return to that place. Um, c c like I hear people are just like, oh, well, I just can't because I just, um, I keep cheating or I keep this or keep that. Like, okay. I just, I think that you have to get to the place where you're miserable enough. Like I couldn't walk, you know, I couldn't walk. And then I, I couldn't think like my brain was just uh, hijacked. <laughs> and so to get my brain back and my body back, it's, it's everything. It's life to me. Um, and I have experimented with some other foods, um, and thankfully been fine. <laughs> the one, the one food injury that brought back depression was white potatoes. Mm. I, I was just like, okay, I can have sweet potatoes, but white potatoes, I have depression for 24 to 48 hours. Wow. But you, you got to know you, you got to do your own experiment until you get to that baseline. Then you don't know what foods are causing all of the problems. You get to the baseline, then you reintroduce one new food a week and you know, oh, this isn't rocket science. 
I have this reaction when I eat this food. Um, so it, it's really been easy for me, um, but I know it's not easy for other people. And that's why I'm a coach, because I've had to hold a lot of people's hands through this process. Yeah, I, I, I everything you're saying just resonates. It's so similar to me. I'm the same way. Like, I, I can't imagine people are like, oh, I'll do this, but I'll have a little cheat day here or there. And I'm like, why? I couldn't imagine. I'm, I, I, it scares me. The thought of that scares me and going back to what it was like before. Um, wow. So, I'm sorry, I have so many questions. So, like, the MS. Do you know, like, how how does that fix on carnivore? Like, what's the mechanism behind that? Do you know? Does anyone know? I haven't got a clue. And I really thought I was a fluke. I really did. Uh, until I started telling my story and then getting hundreds of messages of people who say, I watched your video. I did the same thing. My symptoms are either reduced or gone. And it's just like, oh, okay. And also I've had clients who have reached out to me and they're eating carnivore and they're, they're sticking to it. They're doing great. And I'm like, what's your fat content? I'm like, oh, I eat a lot of fat. And I'm like, no, 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 you need to increase the fat. They increase the fat, their symptoms are gone. And I'm just like, that's crazy. But I have noticed that the clients who come to me who have already started the injections, they've already started the, the, the disease modifying treatment the the medications that they struggle to to get back um thankfully i had divine intervention and i never took the medication um mm. so i i i really honestly i i don't understand it, except for like i said the the myelin sheath being deteriorated because the myelin sheath on our nerves is made out of fat and so mm. when you eat the fat that's that's really what is rebuilt rebuilding that myelin sheath. Do you know with MS and the injections and the medicine they give people, like how successful is that? How much does it, does it work? I have not, not heard one person, not one person. And I've been talking about this for four years. I've had thousands of people reach out to me through private messages and emails and zoom calls and they're suffering with MS and not one person has said, I, you know what? I felt a lot better after the medication or uh, it resolved my symptoms. Not one. So it's just like incredibly frustrating because you're like, I know there's this thing. And like if I were to get MS right now and I didn't know about carnivore, I would probably never know about you unless I stumbled upon you or found it. Because is anyone, I know the answer to this already, but does any doctor at all ever talk about nutrition? Because what you're saying, I keep hearing Emily over and over again for all these, we're doing the carnivore diet documentary. We have all of these different health issues and ailments. My big one was depression and mental health. And these are all my pills. I show everyone depression, anxiety, stomach issues, all that stuff, but all the depression and SSRIs I was on, no one ever said anything about nutrition. And it was just the food I was eating. And now exactly what you're saying, and I can hear your frustration. Um, I just recently been learning more about for cancer. Uh, my friend Jeff has. Yeah, I've been watching that. Yeah. Stage four cancer and he's fasting and there's all the science. Professor Seifried has been doing it for decades. Eight years ago, he did a video and he's like, chemo is almost like twice as effective when you're fasting and carnivore and you're in ketosis. And. Everyone that's getting cancer right now, nobody knows any of this. The only thing the doctors tell you is here's treatment, here's chemo, here's medicine. Here's a cookie. Here's a cookie. Here's your insure. Have your sugar and yeah, just go over there and be quiet. It's just, it's, it's so frustrating. And I think that's why we got to talk, Carrie. That's why we have to speak. That's why we need channels like yours because that's the only place that this information is. It's yes. literally nowhere else. Yeah. Thank goodness. Like YouTube has its downfalls, but thank goodness for YouTube because none of this like carnivore, uh, cancer, like all this stuff. I wouldn't have known. I, I like, how would I ever have found out about carnivore? Otherwise, I, I don't think I would have unless it, it, <laughs> the odds are very small that that would have happened. But yeah, no. that's why we're doing the documentaries to put the examples out there. And it's awesome. You got your own YouTube channel because your story with bipolar and MS that's going to resonate with other people. Um, 
Yeah, and I'm so thankful for the the forerunners for the you know Sean Baker and and honestly Michaela Peterson was my four minute mile with the MS. I was literally leaving the um, the neurologist appointment and I messaged her and it was at the very beginning before she had you know as huge of a following and I just messaged her because the the neurologist said, you are being reckless and you are going to be in a wheelchair within 10 years. And just speaking this like death over me because I wouldn't take his injections. And I reached out to Michaela and I was like, I know I'm doing the right thing. Am I being reckless? And she was like, no, you have no symptoms. She was like, you've resolved all your symptoms. And so I, and I kept listening to her story with autoimmune disease and I was just like, okay, I can do this. I'm not crazy and I'm not reckless. And it's a gamble. It is mm-hmm. absolutely a gamble, but it was the best gamble of my life. And I, I think it's worth it whenever you're at the bottom of the pit, you know, what What do you got to lose? Like, you can't walk, you can't talk, you can't think, you want to kill yourself, eat a steak. What's the worst thing that's going to happen to you? Right. Well- it sounds like for you too, you're not only, it's not that you just got rid of these issues. It's like, it's reversed now too. Like your general mood and things like that. Like, cause I was clinical depression before. It's not that my depression's just gone and I'm back to normal zombie state. It's like my mood and motivation and everything's changed. Have you noticed other things like that? Yeah, because whenever you're used to, for me, the first 40 years of life has just been through this, this distorted lens and then all of a sudden you can see clearly, you're just like, oh, what? Yeah. Oh my gosh, what can I do more? What can I do tomorrow? What can I do in five months? Like you start to plan for the future instead of survive today. You know, it's a completely different experience. It's so, I was talking to someone the other day, I'm like, this is like the twilight zone. Like you're saying stuff right out of my brain. P- people are like to me, cause so I did, I, I'm a YouTuber. I've been doing homesteading videos and then I found carnivore and I was like, I'm going to do one 30 day video and it resonated with people. But everyone's like, you're so inspirational. You're so motivational. I'm like, what, what? Cause it was, but it's like, it's exactly what you just said. How could I not be? It was so dark. It was such a dark place. My whole life. It's like breaking free and seeing this light. It's like, how can you not be fired up and motivated and excited? I feel like I'm uh, making up for lost time too. That's been my only bad thing on carnivore is like, I'm doing so much. I'm like, I got to have some balance and slow down a little bit, but it's just like, go, 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 go. You'll find it. You'll find it. It'll come. Yeah. And honestly, it, it, (laughs) with great power comes great responsibility. Like I feel like I have, the, the the power to just inspire people and just to share this experience with them. Like, I cannot tell you, like, I still get choked up with the people who send me a message and say that I saved their life mm. on a freaking video, you know? Like, I just talked to the camera and just shared my experience. That's it. And I'm not, you know, using any kind of like, even, even my master's in clinical counseling, like I'm not using that to, cause, cause I'm telling you, they didn't teach me anything about nutrition <laughs> there. Um, I'm literally just using my story and it's changing people's lives. So I, I would think, how can, how can I not? How can I not just share my story and just help other people? And it's so fun. It's so fun to watch people literally, like my clients, I watch them literally transform right before my very eyes. And when I was a therapist, it was like Groundhog Day. It was like, okay, let's talk about your childhood trauma. Let's talk about what's going on with your husband. Let's talk about this. Okay, here's an exercise, blah, 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 next week okay, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. And it, and it almost felt like I was like re-injuring them. Mm. And I went to a colleague and I'm like, so they're not getting better. Like, am I doing something wrong? And they're like, no, that's what we do. We just, we offer a safe space for them. Mm. I'm like, what? Like, no, that's not what I signed up for. And I'm sure there's amazing therapists out there and there's great breakthrough. 
But for me, these people were like elbow deep in a bag of chips with a big gulp. And they're like, their brain is too inflamed for them to even hear what I'm saying. Yeah. So I get my clients to clear out all that noise. Then we get to work on the trauma. And it's just like, it's like rocket fuel. It's amazing. Life changing. Yeah. That's so cool. I, I feel you too, because like I said, I was just going to do this 30 day video. I started getting those comments like you're saying. And like I, when I did carnivore, I have no more addictions, no more sugar, no more caffeine, nothing. But now I'm kind of addicted to that, that kind of thing. But you, you've been to such a dark, hopeless place that you can, you have this empathy for these people. So when you get those comments, I can see it hits you hard. I have the same thing. I was always joking before, like, oh, carnivores don't cry. I'm bawling all the time lately. I'll get these comments from people. I'm like, that's just incredible because you know how hopeless they were and, and such a dark place they were in. And like, what bigger, better calling in life than to be able to help someone with that? But you, the crazy thing is, it's where else do you see this? Like, huh. where else do you see this? It's everyone I talk to that's that's, that's hopeless and that tries this. I don't see people like, oh, I tried it and yeah, I got fat and it didn't work for me and I'm done. It's like almost everyone just seems to have these incredible results. And then they go on to inspire other people. It seems like it's spreading more and more. Oh, and total side effect. I lost 120 pounds. Oh, my goodness. That's 120 amazing. pounds. Like I wasn't even trying because I'm from southeast Missouri and all the girls are big here. Like yeah. it's just what you look like. That I didn't think there was anything different. I was chalked full of inflammation. I just thought I was big bone. Nope. Not at all. It was inflammation all throughout my face, my body, my arms, my legs, and lost 120 pounds, not even trying, just eating ribeyes. Yeah. It's amazing. I, it's not even a diet. Like it's not... That, that's the thing that's frustrating for me now too, is when you see all these people in the world suffering, and they're like, I could never do what you're doing. I'm like, it's freaking easy. Like I'm eating ribeyes. Like it's, I get it. Cause it was crazy to me when I started, but once you're in that zone, it's so easy. It's so easy. Just cook a steak and eat it and love it. Like, oh, that's hard. How am I managing? Yeah. That's why I set up my, my coaching for two months, because if I can get them through the first two months, they're fine. And it's, it's funny because <laughs> I had this client and uh, I told him at the beginning, I was like, okay, let's just do this for 35 to 45 days and then we can reevaluate. And he was like, okay, okay, cool. So we get to 35 days and he goes, I feel so good. <laughs> and he goes, I don't want to eat ice cream. I don't want to eat chocolate. You tricked me. You said we were going to reevaluate, but now I don't even want it. <laughs> I, was like, awesome. I was like, I didn't trick you. I didn't trick you. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's other people who struggle because it's a mental thing. Sometimes it's not just a physical thing. Um, there is um, like I've had clients who they were in foster care and uh, their foster parents locked the refrigerator. Um, and uh, some of them who were in poverty and they had to steal for food. And so there there's so much that comes up. Um, whenever we really do break down this addiction to sugar and processed foods. Um, and so that's why I'm so grateful, um, you know, just to be able to offer them something instead of like, okay, let's do our breathing exercises or let's think happy thoughts, like go eat a ribeye, try right. that. Something that works. Yeah. Eat more fat. <laughs> I love what you're saying about tricking people because I've had that conversation so many times. And I, there was just someone here the other day, my wife's friend. And it's like, yeah, after 30 days or I like 60 days more. But yeah, after 30 days, you can eat a cupcake. You can have birthday cake. It's just like <laughs> wink, wink. Because you know, everyone you tell it to, you know. But hey, whatever they got to tell themselves. I, I thought carnivore was so crazy. I'm like, there's no way I could just eat meat. And I had to, I had to convince myself so hard. I just eventually did. And I always tell people this, don't tell yourself you're going to eat meat for 30 days. Just say, I'm going to eliminate sugar and seed oils and processed food. You're really telling yourself you're eating meat. But if you say it that other way and rephrase it, it's a lot easier to stomach. And My favorite, this is what I do with all of my clients is all we're going to do is an experiment. 
Oh, We're right. literally just doing an experiment for 45 days because you can do all the testing in the world. You can do blood testing. You could do skin testing to find out what you're allergic to and blah, 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 blah. But what if you do your own elimination diet where you just do an experiment, you remove everything but animal meat and animal fat, and then you reintroduce one new food a week. Then you know that's the problem. Like it's literally your own experiment and you could do your own experiment and say, I'm going to experiment with including butter or including eggs or including whatever. And, and then, you know, and then you can always tweak that experiment. Right. Yeah. I love that. Do you, um, have you had, well, it's been four years now, so maybe you're, you're past this point, but I'm six months in, I keep having these carnivore epiphanies, like, wow, that stuff was so messed up. How was I so like this? What was I thinking? Like, how was I so foolish to keep going into doctor after doctor and getting pills? Or when I'm at the grocery store looking around and I see people just loading the cart, overflowing it, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, that's all waste. It's all going to go in your body and right out. Your body needs none of it. It's all, I keep having things like this. Have you had stuff like that happen? Because it's a big psyop. Because we are programmed from birth with our our cartoons and and the ads for cereals. And that's what everybody do does. Get a Pop-Tart on the way to school. You know? It's, it's so it's the most important meal of the day. Get that Pop-Tart. Eat your Eggo waffle. Eat your Frosted Flakes. Eat your Fruit Loops. You know what I mean? And then, oh my gosh, sugar is everywhere. They like totally push it on our kids. Mm -hmm. And so we've been conditioned and it's okay. Like if you think about it, if you quit heroin, you're not getting like heroin ads on your newsfeed yeah. or you know you don't have a, a a person living in your house who's shooting up heroin hopefully um you know but you have it everywhere you have it at every every function at church at school at family gatherings it's everywhere so to really stand out it we are actually the the, the black sheep <laughs> to yeah. really to to step out of that programming to say oh it's okay it's just a cupcake and it's your birthday so you should celebrate yourself and you've had a rough week you need a shake you know it's it's just absolutely the programming that we've had um but man i'm so glad because i can't unsee it now right yeah yeah it, it's Everywhere. And I, I always try to like, how did we get there? How did all of this happen? And I don't think it's like just some evil conspiracy theory, some guy. I think it's just like business run amok. Sugar makes so much money. It's in so every much. product. And then you start like all my life, I was always hearing these studies like, oh, meat's going to kill you. It's going to clog your arteries. And I was so foolish because I'm like, oh, that's science. That's a study. But now that you I've learned more and I'm thinking clear, you look into those. A lot of those are sponsored by Kellogg's or the cereal company or sugar. And it's like, oh, of course, you want to if you want to sell a lot of sugar, just scare people away from meat. What else are they going to eat? They'll have salad for a week and then they'll be eating all the processed junk in the grocery store again. And it's more and they'll become lifelong sugar consumers forever. Um, yeah, it's uh it's crazy. I think that's why I like carnivores so much because you're kind of a black sheep. You've got to kind of be weird. You got to be brave to kind of step out and do it. Um, there's, there's something to that for sure. Absolutely. And um, honestly, there's so much freedom. I didn't realize how much food freedom I would have. I thought that I was going to white knuckle it for the rest of my life. And I was yeah. going to like go through the grocery store and just be longing for the cupcakes and everything. But now like the noise is gone. Like I'm not thinking about food 24 seven. Like I literally had to eat every two to four hours before I had a jar of peanut butter on my nightstand in case I like woke up in the middle of the night. So I could like have a couple of tablespoons like I was not like sane <laughs> at all around food. And so now to have, sometimes I literally eat once a day and sometimes I just fast. Um, and honestly, that food freedom is worth everything to me. It's, it's one of the weirdest things too, because going into carnivore, I never would have expected that as an incentive or a benefit of carnivore. 
And it's huge. I, it's kind of corny, but I used to say that. It's like you become the captain of your own ship. It's like I'm in control now. This food isn't controlling me anymore. And if you think about it, you're like you're trying to do carnivore to lose weight or overcome depression or these things. You don't think about that. But it is huge being in total control. Plus, all the time that was wasted before. Just I, I went in the grocery store the other day and I got um, four steaks and they were really thick. And it was like eighty dollars. So I'm like, ooh, that's a lot of money. But then I'm like, no, it's not. I just walked through the whole grocery store, and before that, I would have been like, oh, I got to get the baked potatoes, and I got to get the chips, and I got to get the dessert. Oh, what about the toppings and the seasonings and the sides and all that stuff? It would have been 150 bucks double that easily before. And what about the doctor's bills? What about the medication? Yeah. What These about were the expensive? The days out of work. Yeah. You're saving so much money by being well. Yeah. All the out to eat and the desserts. Oh, I gotta have my ice cream now. I ate dinner Max. like every single time. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. That that's one of the questions I get a lot is how can you afford to do carnivore? I'm like, you're not doing the honest math if you're asking that question because if you really do the math, count all the Starbucks and the popcorn and the snacks and all that, you're spending way more than I am. Yep, I started on food stamps and living in a uh, a camper. Mm. I mean, I was like lowest of the totem pole and, but it became my priority. And I was just like, okay, I'm going to do this. And it, it was the best, the, the best choice that I could have made. And it really pulled me out of that, that, uh, experience. Wow. I, what is, um, can you tell us a little bit more about, so we talked about the MS a little bit, but you also have the bipolar. When you have bipolar, is that also depression, anxiety, or is it distinct and by itself? I, I really don't know that much about it. Bipolar is is a mix because everyone, ha their bipolar is different. Um, and it's different at different times. Um for me, bipolar disorder was periods of mania where I would go and I would spend money that I didn't have. I would make risky choices, risky behavior. Um, I would marry people. I married random people like, <laughs> oh, OK, you'll do. Um, and, and just these horrible life decisions or get fired from a job because I wasn't doing my work because I was distracted by my mania or it was that, or it was complete depression where mm. I'm in bed. I'm worthless. I'm useless. I hate myself. I don't want to live. Um, and I'm irritable and I'm barking at everybody and I'm yelling at everybody. Um, and I was not pleasant to be around at all. Um, and then the really horrible part was the end of 2018, where it turned into rapid cycling bipolar disorder, um, because bipolar disorder can, you can have cycles of a year, a month, you know, it, it just depends. And then you can have even sometimes where you have like a period of five years where you have no cycle, like you're, you're fine, you're stable. But mine went into rapid cycling where I didn't know who I was going to be from one day to the next. It was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I was mm. like two different people. And I, I, I literally couldn't plan my day because I didn't know if I was going to be able to function. And then that's whenever I, I had to, you know, move in with my mom and quit working. And it was just devastating. Um, but most of the time for people with bipolar disorder, it's a life sentence and you, they put you on this medication and what it does is it, it numbs you out enough to stop having the mania. And then it picks you up just a little bit so that you can at least get out of bed. And so you're just this zombie that you go to work and you go home and you go to work and you go home and you like wave at your neighbor and you go back inside and you're just this zombie. Like you're not, you're just not, feeling. And that's why some people really enjoy the mania because they feel joy. Mm. They feel exhilaration. Um, but honestly, every, by every person with bipolar disorder is different. How you describe that is precisely how I described my depression when they put me on those meds. 
no feeling or emotion whatsoever just like why am i even living there's no yes. ups there's no downs there's just nothing i'm like i guess i didn't kill myself today but i have no other life otherwise i did that for years and years and so it sounds like the bipolar you you said with the ms on the medication like doesn't seem to help anyone did any of the medication on the bipolar i mean it just it made you a zombie but I didn't commit suicide, so it worked. Yeah. That was literally it. I didn't commit suicide. Um, yeah. And honestly, I, I really, I never, I was never functioning. Not at one point was I like, I got this. Yeah. I was in a state for a long time where I described it as just catatonic, almost like a zombie, just barely there. Like, what are you doing? Yes. And Absolutely. then. Yeah, and the the sleep got bad, and then um, insomnia, and just more and more, more and more things. But well, and I, I think what bothers me more than anything is whenever people come to me and they take it on as their identity, and they really think that they did something wrong. Right. And I know that that's not the case because it's not like on you know. Well, my last episode was April of two thousand nineteen. It's not like all of a sudden on April of 2019, I became a better person that I just thought happy thoughts and I was positive and I just, you know, put my big girl pants on and I just went to work. No, I literally had my entire brain change. It was removed the inflammation and it was able to function. And I was almost pissed whenever I first experienced it because I was like, screw you guys this is what you feel like yeah this is what it's like to have your brain work right no and they're wonder. all taking it they're all taking it for granted too no wonder you have a white picket fence and a marriage for 25 years in this beautiful house and you've been at the same job for 10 years no wonder your brain this is what it's like and yeah. so that's why now i'm just like okay I, I don't care if people get sick of hearing me. They can just go somewhere else because I'm going for those that are suffering. I'm going for the most miserable people who feel like they are worthless piece of crap and to tell, to shake them and say, it's not you. It's the Doritos and the soda. Yes. It's not you. Yeah. That's so true. On many fronts too, on the depression uh, front, it's, not their fault. I thought the same thing. There's just something wrong with me. I'm defective. But uh, you you hear people sometimes in the media or on TV or whatever, judging people that are overweight too. Yeah. And I don't know what my thoughts were on that before. I, I, at one time in my life, I might have been like, yeah, you know, it's your decision to eat. But now it's like, no, sugar is an addictive drug. And like you were saying earlier, it's literally in everything. I can't moderate. So I would just keep eating no. and eating and eating. So is that my fault? I don't know. I decided to eat more sugar, but I can't stop. I'm addicted like like it's a drug. And unlike a drug that like heroin or something, I would have to be, a, I could take a little responsibility. Like I know heroin's bad. I'm going to go out and take heroin. But sugar, my mom was giving me when I was a little. Like I was born on sugar and given it. The other thing too, like exercising that people say, why don't you just go exercise? I was so depressed and sick. Like, how am I going to go exercise? Uh, that, that's another one too. If you want to lose weight, just exercise. You know, no, you have I, the brain fog and all this. You can't. No. And like, I, I literally couldn't, I mean, I, I couldn't do anything. And the craziest thing was I, I was very intent uh, or very uh, opinionated about that I'm I'm doing my best just to eat meat, eat meat, eat animal fat. I'm not doing this to lose weight anyway, even though I've heard that exercise helps your mental health. Um, I was like, I'm doing one thing at a time. I'm eating meat and fat and that's it. And then all of a sudden I was like mm, about eight months in, I, it was a beautiful day outside and I had the thought, I want to go on a walk. And I was like, who just said that? Like, who, who just said that? Like, are you kidding me? And I went on a like mile hike and I felt so good. And then I started working out every day and now I do CrossFit and it's just like, who am I? This is crazy. I'm 44 years old and I'm, I'm more active now than I ever was. You sound just like me. <laughs> I'm, I'm 43 and it was the same thing. 
It was just like, all of a sudden I got some energy. I'm going to go for a little walk in the morning. And then it turned into a walk every single morning. Then I got resistance bands. Then I started doing pull-ups. I'm like, what is going on? I hated exercising before this, but I was miserable. I had no energy. So now it's just, I, I look forward to doing it every day. I, that's, that's a good habit. Like, it seems like you start doing carnivore, which is an amazing habit. And then you start getting these other things. Are there other things you're doing besides exercise outside of carnivore? Oh yeah. Carnivore was just the gateway drug. (laughs) (laughs) Like carnivore opened up, like, I'll, I'll be real honest with you. Like I, okay. Start carnivore. I wasn't the same person after a year. And then from year one to year two, I wasn't the same person after that year. And then year three. And now I'm literally not the same person I was six months ago. Mm. Like it's, it just keep it's like exponential. It just keeps going. Yes. And yeah. And my favorite thing is the spiritual stuff. And that's what I find in my clients. Like I, I had this one client who we, we did, uh, you know, two months worth of work and their, their brain got cleared out and they were just doing so great. And they're like, ah, uh, I, I want more. Uh, I, I want you to stay with me for a year. So we, we signed a year contract and, and he's literally like in a different realm. Like it's crazy because once you get that foundation of the mental clarity, then you can do more in whatever your practice is. You can just do better and do more. And it just keeps getting better for me personally. My, my favorite uh, thing that I tell everybody that I started at the beginning of, of carnivore, I would say a year in a year in to carnivore, I started grounding. I started going outside with my bare feet and I live in Missouri. So sometimes it was like 10 degrees, but I had this commitment to do it for 10 to 15 minutes every morning at sunrise. And so I look at the sun for 10 to 15 minutes every single morning and it's changed my life. But I couldn't have done that when I was on standard American diet. There's no way I could have done that. I'm not copying you, but you are literally me. It's like the twilight zone. I Hi. Try, I, so <laughs> I heard the grounding thing. I'm like, like carnivore. I'm like, that's so stupid. That's crazy. Like, oh, you put your feet on the ground. But I, I did it one day because um, I'd go out and I'd go for my walk and I didn't have my shoes on or anything. I just went out and I'm like, well, this feels kind of nice. And then I heard about it and then I did it again. And now it's my ritual. Like every morning. I go, my feet get in the grass. I go for a walk to the other end of the property. I do the resistance bands and it feels amazing. And now I'm learning there's actually a lot of science behind it. Um, And and that's And inflammation. It removes inflammation. I mean, there's so many studies on it. And and for me, it was also my spiritual uh, connection with nature, you know, with God. And it was just like, it totally like reset my brain. And it was crazy to me whenever I would have just different ideas that would come to me in that 10 to 15 minutes. And it was just like, so clear. It was like, oh, I need to do this. And that wouldn't have come to me if I was just like, you know, sitting here, like scrolling, you know, Facebook or, you know, doing something else or whatever. Right. Just stop, look at the sun. And put your feet on the ground for yep. 15 minutes. Big breath of fresh air. You heard the birds chirping. You're like oh. in the moment for the first time in my life. That's what carnivore has done too. Living in the moment. Not what am I doing later? What's what happened before? You're present. Like I, when you have that brain fog, you're not present. That's one of the biggest values for me on carnivore too is like with my family. I'm like, I feel like I'm here now before mm. I was somewhere else. It's It's crazy. You know, everything you're saying. This is one of my carnivore epiphanies after six months too and in, in the carnivore diet documentary. Um, diabetes, mental health, cancer, all of these issues we have, if you try to really simplify it, it's like, what were we doing wrong? It was an escape from natural. It's natural for humans to walk around with their feet in the grass and get sunshine. It's not natural to sit in an office under fluorescent light for 13 hours. It's not natural to take a piece of paper and light it on fire and put it in your mouth and then you get cancer from smoking. Like the more unnatural we get, 
it seems like all of these problems happen cancer and diabetes and it's like now it's like duh he's just saying whatever simple but I, it seems like people don't get that i didn't get it before but the further we get away from natural the closer you get to nature and natural it seems like your life just gets better and better and better so true so true and honestly um there's so much peace in that and i think that peace is what we're all looking for mm -hmm. when, whenever we're we're sitting there and we're scrolling you know facebook we're trying to get that dopamine hit yeah. because that dopamine is like oh, that calm that peace and so when we can get that naturally in nature it's so much more effective and it doesn't jack up our whole system of our hormones and everything else and everything just works the way it's supposed to like a proper human a proper human should just have a smile on its face and not before this i used to hold all my tension in my jaw and i'd always be gritting my teeth and grinding my teeth how like improper is that it's just uh i love what you said that it gets better and better exponentially oh, so much like dude keep me updated because <laughs> i cannot wait to hear where you're going to be in a year because like on day 30 it was inc I, I think some people are different maybe it's easier for men versus women i don't know hormones genetics i don't know but on day 30 i felt so amazing and i was very fortunate to get to talk to some of these good doctors that you mentioned earlier yeah. who i totally agree with we have to elevate their voices talk about being a carnivore you have to be brave but to be a doctor like dr barry and then put yourself out there and and go against the grain like that i talked to dr chafee and he's like he said well, exactly what you said emily just wait. It's going to get better and better. I'm like, it can't, it can't get any better. And it has, that was on day 30. I'm on day 204 today and it just keeps getting better. It's unbelievable. Uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you, we got a bunch of questions in the okay. side. If, if you guys have a question, just put a big Q next to it. Um, do you feel like you, you mentioned this a little bit, but I feel like my brain is working in like a different level, like on a subconscious level. I don't know. Like when I read a book now, it's just so easy to comprehend things. And when I do my YouTube videos, which I've been doing for eight years now, before I would stumble and stutter through them and it would take hours of editing. And now most of my videos, I just did one earlier today. I sit in front of the camera and I, it's just like, it comes right out. It flows out of my brain. I talk for 30 minutes straight. I don't have a script or a teleprompter. I oftentimes I don't even have much prepared. And it just flows and flows and flows. It's it's like you're using a different part of your brain on carnivore. I don't know if you've experienced that or there's any science or if you have any if you know anything about that. I don't have any science, but I do have a visual. And what I see it as is that we are a, a just a conduit of the divine that we don't have the blockages like a, like a big P, uh, PVC pipe. And it's got like all these like blockages and everything. But whenever we're just this clear vessel, the divine can just flow through us. And we don't even have to think about what we're saying because it's it's just inspired and it's just flowing through us. And uh, honestly, I, I think that that's what that's the way that we are designed. But whenever we got all the junk in us, that's whenever it's it's such a struggle. Right. Yeah. Someone said this to me early on in my carnivore journey and I loved it because I had brain fog before, but I didn't realize the extent of my brain fog till it was gone. And they're like, you can't see the fog till you're out of the fog. Yes. Everyone that's thinking about doing carnivore, I tell them that because everyone that's thinking about doing carnivore always says, oh, I got brain fog too. And I'm like, I don't want to scare you, but you don't know the extent of your brain fog. You just know a little bit of it. You're not going to see it until you're out of it. That, that was been one of the most. Because it's relative. Things. I mean, you literally don't know. And until it's gone, like, like I said, whenever I, I realized what everyone else's brain is functioning like, it's just like, oh, this is what this is like. I had no idea. Um, and so honestly, most people, e even people who are functioning, even people who are just like, you know, doing great, you know, they're, they're at their job, they're doing great in their marriage or whatever, they do this. I, like I had this, I had this guy, um, uh, one of my clients <laughs> cracked me up. He, uh, he, he's 
fine, you know, doing fine. He didn't do this for any like life threatening reason or anything. And then he goes, I went on a plane and I was like, okay. And he was like, and I didn't think about the plane crashing. <laughs> and I was like, is that okay? And he goes, and I didn't have to have a drink to be on the plane without thinking about the plane crashing. And I was like, I was like, that's anxiety. He goes, yeah, I didn't even know I had anxiety, <laughs> but it's gone. And then he, he went on his business trip and he came back and he was like the flight back. I was fine. And then the plane landed and I didn't even know it landed. Normally he's like gripping the seat, like, okay, okay, okay. And he goes, and I just thought that was normal. I thought that was just how you do. And I was just like, that is so cool. Like it's those little things that come up that we don't even know what healthy feels like. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a sad state that anxiety is normal for most people. I was the most anxious person before carnivore too. And it's like, what, what is the mechanism behind that? Well, like way back in the day, I was running away from a lion. Then I should have had been anxious or stressed or have the adrenaline going. But now everything I've ever been anxious about in my life was just a big waste of time. And it's completely gone on carnivore. Like I have none. I have no anxiety. It's just incredible. Um, and how much more can we do when we're not sitting there thinking about yeah. the lion chasing us? Right. How much more can we create? How much better can we be present. Yes. Yeah. And how much energy is wasted ruminating and stressing over all of that stuff. That's why people are like, it's funny. I was talking to a really good friend today for about three hours. He, he messaged me and he was like, I saw the video you did the other day. I didn't realize how bad your depression was. I have depression. I have anxiety. I've been going through all this. And I was talking to him about all these things. And it's just like, it's so sad that so many people have this, but we were talking to him. He's like, I'm so tired all the time. I'm like, well, that's because your body's inflamed. It's because your you have brain fog. It's because you're constantly anxious. And it's because you're putting all of this food into your body. And think about what your body has to do when you put 50 different ingredients in your body a day. You have an immune system like, oh, is this a poison? Is this something I got to be worried about? And it's got to process all this garbage. Of course, that's going to make you tired and put a toll on your body. Now I eat something and it's just like, oh, it's meat again. Boom, done. It's like next. And Move on. what I love is that I I, I just eat uh, to live. I don't live to eat. Yes. And before when I you had all the different flavors and the different sides and the different things, and it was just like this dopamine hit. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, I, I, it, it, cause people are like, Oh, that's so boring. That's the key, right? Be bored with your food, be bored because you don't want to sit there and like make it be this like huge production. Like just get the food and then go do whatever you need to do. Like eating is not supposed to be an activity. Yes. Oh, I, I had a loved one that started carnivore say something like that. Like, it's just not fun anymore eating. And I'm like, it's fun I, to do I, other things. <laughs> yeah. I put on my like psychologist therapy hat. I'm like, well, should eating really be entertainment? That sounds kind of like it's a drug. Like <laughs> you're supposed to get entertainment out of eating. I get it because I've done it and I've been there, but I don't have that. I don't have that anymore. Although I do feel a little hypocritical because I really enjoy steak now. Yes. Like so much. Like I'm a little hypocritical on that point, I guess, but um yeah, absolutely. But it's totally different than like sitting there with like mashed potatoes and mac and cheese and yeah. rolls and you know, stuffing and like all the things. It's yeah. totally different just eating a steak. Yep. Awesome. Wow, we got a whole bunch of chat here. This is good. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to go through some of these here and ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Sure, uh, yeah. Couple new members. Thank you all for joining. Um, any members we get goes a hundred percent to the carnivore diet movie. Any super chats we get all go to the carnivore diet. Movie. It's all crowdfunded. Um, so thank you, Julie. David is another member and uh, Nicole. And the other thing, if you're a member, I answer all your comments. I try to answer all of them or answer them first. And we have a members only live stream that happens every Thursday at 3 PM. Uh, started doing that recently. So that's been a lot of fun, but now we have a few questions. Oh, Robin, one of my favorites, carnivorous grandma, Robin. She's asking, um, Emily, do you have kids? And if so, are they carnivore too? If not, is there anyone else in your family on carnivore? 
Awesome. Um, yes, I have a 15 year old. Um, and so as you can imagine, that was a very uh, challenging age to shift um, him. Um, and so we started really gradual. Um, and I would say he's keto now. Um, and my husband uh, went carnivore two years ago, um, changed his life. And he, he says all the time, I'm so glad. Uh, and it's so funny because I wasn't even trying to get him to be carnivore. I, um, I wrote this program for inner clarity system where I, I, I literally do like a carnivore 101 where I give all the details to my clients in these emails. And so I, I gave him my husband to just read over and I'm like, you know, help me write this better or whatever. And he's reading it. He's on like week five and he's like, why don't you want me to be carnivore? And I was like, you can do whatever you want. Like you're a grown man, like do what you got to do. And so he did. That's awesome. Yeah. Could you tell us just real quick, a little more about inner clarity systems? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I was before uh, on Instagram, I was carnivore minds, um, you know, because I came from back on a mental health and I, I quickly realized that some of my clients, um, it's important for them to, for me to meet them where they're at. And some of them were keto. Some of them would have white rice, some of them, you know, and then they would come to me and they'd be like, well, I, I can't cause I'm not carnivore. And I'm like, you're not less than like, so, I'm happy for you that you can eat keto. I'm happy for you that you can eat white rice, you know, and, and you don't have the problems that I have. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's a sign of health that I can only tolerate beef and beef fat. Like, cause I'm hardcore lion diet. I have been for basically three years. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I don't think it's a sign of health. I'm happy for people. But what it is, is that inner clarity, that inner knowing that you know the foods that you are supposed to eat and the foods that you aren't. And all I do is I, I literally set up a list with them on the, on the first day where we have a list of foods that we know are good for you, that you know, and, and it's, it's a good list. And then we have our safety net list. And those are the foods that like on a bad day, whenever like your boyfriend yells at you or your, you know, your boss makes you stay over or, you know, you're just, you're just having one of those days. You have those safety net foods that you know are not good for you to eat every day, but like cheese or, you know, something. And then you have the list of the foods that you don't touch. Then we do an experiment for 45 days. And then I stay accountable with them. And I literally um, have, there's this app called Marco Polo where they can send me a video message and I respond to them within 24 to 48 hours. So you literally have a therapist in your pocket because I'm telling you, when you stop eating sugar, stuff's going to come to the surface. Your trauma from your teenage years, your 20s, your childhood, your relational trauma, your self-sabotage, stuff's coming to the surface. So believe me, you want a therapist there so that you can just process that trauma, process that crap. Um, and then I just, I literally hold their hand through that. Um, and it's it's been, for me, one of the most rewarding jobs ever to, to really watch people transform before my very eyes. I love it. That's awesome. I have a link to Emily's YouTube page and I think you have a link on there, uh, to your site as well. If someone wants to learn more about inner clarity system. Yeah. Or uh, just Emily Penton, just if you put Emily Penton anywhere in YouTube, Google, I'll pop up. It's one of the things that's so important because one of the things with carnivore that I think is hard is you want to surround yourself by like-minded people or that people are on the same page with you. Like you were saying earlier, when you're carnivore, you're often very rogue. You're going to the grocery store with sugar everywhere. And to be able to talk to someone that practices what they preach, uh, that's a huge thing. So that's that's really cool. I had one client, she said, uh, she was like two weeks in and she goes, I feel like you moved in with me. <laughs> I was like, that's awesome. Nice. Awesome. Okay, let's see. We got some more questions here. Uh, Maggie said, I wish someone would talk about how carnivore helped other neurological disorders like epilepsy. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, ketosis or keto. I mean, that was definitely designed like 
and they have tons of research on that with epilepsy. Um, so I, I would think that carnivore would help even more. Yeah. I, I'm friends with, um, our neighbors who happen to be Amish and oh, I'm jealous. They're the best. I love them. They're the greatest people. Actually, um, we've had them over for dinner before I was doing carnivore and we've had dinner at their house. And anyways, I was telling one of them a while ago, I'm like, yeah, I've been doing this crazy diet. I'm eating meat only. And he was like, Oh, I know about that. That's keto. And I'm like, how do you know about that? And they have, um, I guess people in the community that have epilepsy and they treat them on keto. So they're like, they're already, they're already ahead of it. But the Amish eat a lot of junk food, a lot of sugar and stuff like that too. So they're, they're interested in learning more. They do so much stuff that's natural and they're out getting sunshine all day. And obviously they're the hardest workers in the world, but, um, it's really funny. I had a really long conversation and, um, one of them is going to try maybe strict keto, almost carnivore. Cause they're having a lot of issues, inflammation and things like that. So that's awesome. Um, I do have a suggestion for you. Um, if you have not interviewed the carnivore family, Oh um, yeah. 10 kids like all amazing I'm, or family of 10 i think they have eight kids family of 10 um amazing amazing story and they have a youtube channel um and even the um the one of the teenagers it's a uh, carnivore teen on instagram oh nice amazing story amazing family totally r- just changed their whole family I have to do that. I've seen a couple of their videos. It, it was great, dude. Yeah. I'll hook. You, I'll 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 introduce you. He's uh, he's one of my friends. Oh yeah, please do. Um, all right. Tina said, "Knowledge is power." God bless you, Emily, for your story. You save lives via video. Thank you, Tina. Jody said, five days with Carrie and a bunch of others." Oh, the f- I'm doing a fast right now uh, yeah. with, with Jeff and. Carnivore Ron started doing it. Who's your carnivore? Brett, Bill not started doing it. So I wasn't, that wasn't my plan. Like everyone jump on, but you guys are awesome. It, How I, are I you a, doing? How are you feeling? I feel amazing. I feel so good. I was kind of worried about doing this call, but I feel fine. And I just, I'm past like 50 hours now, I think of just, just water and some electrolytes. I feel so much better because I did a three day and a five day years ago and I was, it was rough. And I was doing dirty keto carbs going into it. So I know why it all makes sense. But what's really cool, Emily, is this morning after 24 hours or whatever, um, I woke up in bed and it felt like almost my first week on carnivore, which was like the best I felt in my whole life. My whole, my legs, they were so heavy. I said to my wife, I'm like, this is like when I was a kid on Saturday morning and you'd sleep until noon and your legs are dead. Your whole body's dead. I was so calm and so relaxed this morning and I've been great on car. I feel so good on carnivore and I felt this way on carnivore before, but this was to like another level. So it was, it was really interesting. Long story short, when I did that five day fast before on day five, I felt incredible. I felt the best in my whole life, but I had to eat again. Yeah. And I tell people on carnivore, it's it's very similar to how I felt when I was fasting. Carnivore seems like a long-term fast. And now doing this this fast and being on day two, I feel like I'm on carnivore on steroids, like the next level. It's it's weird. I think I'm gonna be doing it a lot more, but I actually I, I do. It's just part of my practice now. I always fast at least one, sometimes two, sometimes three days a week. Um, nice. just because it feels so good and my spiritual connection. Oh my gosh. Yes. Like, it's crazy. I feel, I just feel so much joy and so much inspiration. I get so many more ideas whenever I'm fasting. Yeah. It's something like the mind clears up. You're not using, and my stomach too. It just felt so light this morning. It's, it's felt better on carnivore, but it just, it felt noticeably uh, different. And uh, I was, it was creep. I creeped my wife out this morning. She looked up, she opened her eyes and I was, I was sitting in bed looking at her like this. I just had like a smile on, like the Joker smile on my face. I, I was in and out of sleep this morning with just this big smirk smile on my face. I just, I feel incredible. I'm, I'm only on day two of five, so we'll see how it goes. I don't want to get too, too arrogant about it, but uh, yeah, my friend Jeff, he's, he's done this 28 times. Um, He goes in for chemo tomorrow. 
So he does it Monday, Tuesday, chemo on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, he fasts. Yes. And he's just been having remarkable results with it. But anyways, shout out Carnivore Community, Bill Knott, all these people. I didn't, my intention wasn't to have everyone jump on, but uh, it was really touching to Jeff too. And I'm going to be talking to him later tonight. I'm doing another video later tonight with him. We're doing a little cancer round table. So uh, I think I will be doing this a lot more. I kind of did intermittent, but um, we'll see. Yeah. So I just answered Tina Kathleen's question. It's oh, going great. You go. Thank you, Tina. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. We got some other questions here. Oh yeah. Carnivore Ron's doing it too. You're awesome. Carnivore Ron. Bill Knott's doing it too. Uh, Carnivore Leo said, I used to spend 200 a month on Starbucks. Now I could use that money on healthy food. Yeah. That's awesome. Some good steaks. Karen ha uh, Harrington said, bipolar is different from person to person. My husband has it or had it. He's better now. Extreme highs and lows and spending for him. Oh, spending is the worst. Oh, here's a good question. I know the answer, but I think Emily has a good answer on this one. Do you eat the fat on the steak when on carnivore? <laughs> Yeah, I actually buy the fat by uh, five pound bags. I go straight to the farmer and I tell him I want the fat trimmings. Like whenever you trim off a ribeye or a steak or a strip, I want that fat. Not the waxy stuff, not the suet or whatever, just the, the beef fat trimmings. And I cut it up into tiny little cubes and I put it on parchment paper and I put it in a container in the freezer and I literally eat it raw. Wow. Because I, I just, I, sometimes the, the ribeye is too lean or the, the steak is too lean and I need more supplemental fat. And so I'll just, if I'm really hungry, I'll go by the freezer and I'll just pop a handful of, of fat. Um, and when you eat it raw and frozen and salted, it's just like dense, like cheese. Like it's so good. I gotta try that one. I, yeah, I, you gotta find a, the right source though. Okay. You gotta find a farmer, uh, like a local. I wouldn't get it from like Walmart um, right. to eat it raw. Um, but yeah. That's a that's a huge tip for everyone listening or new to carnivore. I was so fortunate. I had Dr. Kiltz on the channel, and he said, "Carrie, it shouldn't be called carnivore. It should be called fat of words. Yes. All about the fat." And that's the biggest mistake I see people making, myself included. I've fallen into that too, where you start getting some leaner cuts of meat and you're not feeling as good. When you get that fat, man, it just it it's what your body is craving. You just feel incredible. So many people don't get enough of that. Yeah, I do have a video um, where I show in the kitchen how I prep my fat. Um, so if you go to my YouTube channel, if you can't find it, send me a message and I'll send it to you. Uh, Steve asked, how do you get your vitamins on carnivore? <laughs> Um, go to nutrition with Judy and all of her infographs. Oh my gosh. I love how she shows all of the vitamins and nutrients that are in a ribeye or in, uh, oysters or in eggs, or uh, it's just, it's crazy to me. Um, and they're bioavailable. Um, that's the really cool part. Yep. Yeah. She's great. Uh, Jewel said, in the morning, I'm hungry, but I gauge when I try to eat meat or eggs. I'm fine later in the day to eat those. I have to eat in the morning or I feel bad throughout the day. Any suggestions? Eat in the morning. Dude, you, you got you to listen to your body. You, and, you, and you can't listen to YouTubers. I mean, you can't listen to other people. You can hear from them. You can learn from them. You can try different things, but... Your inner clarity, your inner knowing is your GPS. It'd be like literally sitting there like you're driving and you got your GPS and you're like, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to listen to that. I'm going to, I'm going to do what that guy's doing. No, that's your, that's your gift. That's your inner knowing. Follow that. If it says to eat at that time, eat at that time. Yeah. I love that advice. That's one question I get a ton on my channel is you tell me exactly what you're eating and when you're eating. I'm like, <laughs> why? What are you going to do with that? What I'm eating now is drastically different than what I ate. A week and it ago. changes. Yeah, it, it changes. Does. We have oh. different needs. When I hit like my goal weight, I got ravenous. I started eating way more. And it, it's constantly changing. The other thing that's cool on carnivore that I found too is I'm more in tune with my body though. Like uh, not just when to eat, how much to eat, but like salt too. It's like, no, you need a little bit more. It's just like you said, just listen to your body. It'll yeah. tell you exactly. You can hear it a lot more clearly when you're on carnivore. 
Uh, Susie said, Emily, so sorry I'm late. It's Susan Hi, Myers. Susan. Hi, Susan. She's one of my followers. I adore her. Awesome. Uh, Tina said, we support you in this quest, Emily. Thank you. Carrie, we need your help. We need to help YouTuber Boogie2988. All right. Well, send me some more info. Homesteadhow at gmail.com. Uh, Robin is asking, how can we reach Emily? I would love to have her on Carnivorous Grandma Speaks. So many people in my world need to hear her message. Mm, I would love to. Just send me a message. Um, my email is emily at innerclaritysystem.com. Nice. Yeah. I Huge shout out to Robin. I, I'd suggest having her on your channel. She's wonderful. She's a, a great person. Killing it on carnivore and doing some really good videos. Uh, Susie asked, why do I always lose hair on zero carbon fasting? When I add berries and 20 to 50 grams of carbs back, the hair stops falling out. Yeah. Um, this was a big deal for me because um, it definitely happened. And uh, one of the things that I learned is that your body goes into kind of a shock. Um, but whenever I, I realized that the shock that it does is that it actually gets efficient and it puts the nutrients to where your body needs. So if literally my liver is suffering, but my hair is falling out, I don't care. I don't need my hair to live. I need my liver to live. And so I'm actually really grateful for how efficient my body is, that it will it will literally shut off the things that are not necessary. And I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but hair isn't necessary. Um, and so it was very difficult for me um, because I had long, luxurious, thick hair um, and but before I cut it all off. Um, and it's, it, you know, it, it grows back. Uh, it definitely got, got back. I mean, the, the first year was whenever it was really thin and then it grew back in the second, third, you know, fourth year. Um, but in the long run, I want to live and I don't care what I look like. Love that. Yeah. That was one thing. Um, I did a video with, uh, Sean from intentional carnivore. He lost 245 pounds in one year. It's crazy. But he's like, I don't care about the weight. I don't care about any of that. And w both of us, we got a, a live chat question. And they were like, I'm thinking about doing carnivore, but what about um, loose skin? And we both just looked at each other and we're like, <laughs> if that's what you're worried about, like, let's just move on to the next question. That's if you least. are worried about it, I lost 120 pounds in a year and I don't have loose skin because of the amount of fat that I ate. Mm. I ate so much fat. And like, if you think you're eating enough fat, eat more fat. Yeah. If that's really what you're worried about, because like, it's crazy that I don't have like this, like saggy neck and like arms and like it, in my, st I'm not going to show you my stomach, but you know, it's, it's crazy to have lost yeah. that much weight, but I, I think it's the fat. Yep. I hear like fasting or intermittent fasting yes. stuff can help with that too, but it takes time. It's going to take some time, but Someone said, how do people ground in Texas? So, so many bugs and fire ants. I don't know if that was a question or a joke. Uh, Susie said, I also have bipolar two is gone on carnivore. Better at 59 than ever. I just hiked and camped in the Grand Canyon. Awesome, Susie. Yay. That's yes, her pictures were amazing of the Grand Canyon. That's life changing. And that sounds like a fun little trip too. Uh, Mahep said, I... I I keep going back to carbs. How do I quit from that addiction? Feed your cravings with animal fat. So many times people are just trying to restrict in this whole calorie in, calorie out crap. No, don't torture yourself. You're supposed to be satiated and just do it for the first month. All you got to do is get away from the addiction then you can start tweaking things and go, okay, maybe I don't need to eat this much fat once you get away from the addiction. But for the first 30 days, just stuff your face with fat. That's what I did. Yes. The only other thing that helped me if I ever get those cravings those first couple of days is more bacon. Yep. If you're, if <laughs> you're doing bacon. Yeah. That's fat. Yep. Uh, Drew said, I used to get shaky when I wouldn't eat enough. That doesn't happen anymore, but I still get shaky speaking in front of people when public speaking and can find it difficult to catch my breath. Mm. 
fat, fat usually helps. <laughs> I yeah. know that sounds ridiculous, but it does. It just takes that anxiety away. It's just like a blanket where yeah. you're just like, <sighs> like nothing else really matters. Yeah. Most people are more scared of public speaking than like death or anything else. So yeah. you probably still got some anxiety there. Hopefully that, that would help you get rid of it. It's crazy because public speaking would have killed me before. Now, now you have a YouTube channel. Doing, yeah, I'm doing it. We did a 24 hour live stream before with like heart surgeons and doctors. And I was like, there's, it's crazy. There's like none. It's not even a little bit. It's Just awesome. Gone forever. You're a different person. Yes. Uh, question. I might've missed this, but how long did it take you to clear your brain fog and what was the monthly progress? Do you have up and down weeks along the way? Um, so yes, it was definitely up and down. Um, for me, my first experience was about the end of the fourth week. Um, uh, no end of the third week. So right in the middle, the fourth week, um, all of a sudden I had this just glimpse of hope for 10 minutes. And it was such a foreign emotion. I was just like, what is that? I had joy. And I was just like, okay, this is cool. And then it was gone. So it was like 10 minutes. And then the next day it came back for 15 minutes. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And then it was longer. And then it just like slowly progressed into more. And then I started thinking, hey, I think I'm going to do this this afternoon. Or I think I'm going to do this tomorrow. Or I think I'm going to do this next month. Like I started planning for the future. Um, and so that was the experience for me. So I started this February 24th, 2019. My last episode of anything was April of 2019. But I did not cheat. I did not play around. And I ate tons of animal fat. Awesome. Jackie Jones said, love you, Emily. And now you've introduced me to Homestead How. I never knew about this YouTube until today. Oh, Yay! Awesome. Welcome, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. I love you. If you don't know Jackie Jones, go follow her. She's Check amazing. She is like literally like the carnivore mecca. Like everybody is it, like that, you know, the seven degrees or six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Like, yeah. It's six degrees of Jackie Jones <laughs> because everybody in the carnivore community is associated somehow with, uh, they have their own uh, YouTube channel, Carnivore Twins, her and Karen Miles, and they are amazing. Oh, nice. They have meetups. Like they literally plan meetups and people come from all over the country to go to these meetups and to meet like Kelly Hogan and Ken Berry and all these people. It's so fun. That's so cool. Shout out Jackie Jones. Uh, Tom, uh, $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Tom. I'll go into the carnivore diet doc and another one for five more. Thank you, Thanks, Tom. Tom. And then Sarah, uh, just want to show a little support $10 super chat. Thank you so much. So uh, sweet. Looks like we got one more here. Bally music journey. How do you break the vegetable habit? I'm having trouble making the leap to nothing but meat. Mm. I can't answer that question because I never ate my vegetables. I ate cookie dough and ice cream and pizza and beer and ramen noodles and chips. I never ate my vegetables. Did you? Yeah. I did. Yeah. Way too many of them. That's why I get upset when people say to me, you would have just done the same thing you did on carnivore if you just went plant-based. Because before I started carnivore, I realized this afterwards. I was like, I pretty much was plant-based. I'd have a salad for lunch, salad for dinner. I'd have a little bit of protein, chicken or something low fat because that fat was going to kill me and some like low carb vegetables. I was miserable, the depression, anxiety, everything. I still had inflammation, all those problems. Um, more fat, more bacon. I don't know. Just stop it. <laughs> or, or you could do like I did with the list where you have the list of foods that you know they're good for you. And then you have the safety net list of a couple of vegetables that are just like, they're there for you. Like that's your little, like your, your uh, security blanket. Right. And then you have the list of vegetables that you know are, are like have oxalates and, and these anti, um, uh, the things that are going to hurt you basically like just break it up like that. Yeah. 
I would be, I, I get, my thing is, I'd be scared. Like, oh, I'm going to have that. And then there's some carbs in it. And now I'm craving. And now I want more. And now I want more. I guess it's like you said, everyone's different, but I can't moderate. So I even can't if either. I had if I had some broccoli or something, it's just got a little bit of carbs in it. I'd be hungry an hour later. Well, and I, it awakens the beast. Yes. I want to keep the beast quiet and asleep. I don't want right. the beast to be talking about anything. Like just yeah. shh. Whenever I, I eat carbs, the beast comes up. Oh, well, you had broccoli. Maybe yep. you could have this. Maybe you could have that. Maybe you could shut up. Yeah. I used to do that on keto for years. I lost a bunch of weight on keto years ago. And then I would be like, oh, I'm just going to eat in moderation now. I'll just do, I'll be smart. Some broccoli. I'll have, oh, blueberries. Those don't have many carbs in it. And every time I gained all the weight back and more. And I did it over and over and over again. Why? Because sugar is an addictive drug. I can't moderate sugar. And you eat some blueberries. It all goes in your body the same way. It's got sugar in it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Angela said, I struggle eating fat. I have loose skin after losing 50 pounds for some reason. Will my fat digestion improve after time? Eat it raw. I have that. And that's the reason why, honestly, to be honest, the whole reason I ever even tried it raw was that I would feel like icky whenever I would eat a lot of fat. Like it was like greasy and it would just like sit in my stomach and it would just be like heavy. And so I started cutting it and I'm talking about tiny, like a little, little cube, cut it into tiny cubes. Even if you you're eating a ribeye, just cut it off, cut off the fat and then cut it into tiny little cubes, put it on parchment paper in a container, a plastic container in the freezer, and then pull it out and eat it right there, frozen and raw, totally better digestion. Nice. I got to try that. That's a great one because... So many people struggle with that. I, I never heard of doing it that way. The only thing I've done differently was if I get like a lot of like a whole bunch of fat, I'll cut it up into cubes and put it like in the air fryer or cast iron skillet with some salt. And then I'll I'll have like a bite of the leaner steak and then I'll put a little piece of fat yeah. with it and kind of mix it up. Or I do a lot of butter with the with the with the steak. So yeah. Um I think you kind of answered this one. When I eat too much fat, I get nausea. Does this get better as my body adapts? Same same kind of deal. Try I think. it raw. Yep. Think and go aloe twenty dollars super sticker. Wow. wow, thank you. So generous. Uh, and then Bill Gavin said, Emily, you look amazing. Uh, keep it up. Thanks for the great encouragement. That's awesome. You should have seen me five years ago, man. I didn't. I I I looked my age <laughs> at that time, and it's crazy now. I look back at my uh, my high school pictures. And it's, it's, I look more like I did whenever I was like 18 now. It's crazy. Nice. It's like, uh, I got to show you this real quick. Yeah. I show everyone this. This is my friend, Alex. So wow. the guy in the after picture, can you guess how old he is? Uh, he looks like he's about 35, 40, 65. <laughs> so I, it was funny. I, um, not to like name drop, but I was so I was so fortunate. I had Dr. Barry on the channel and I showed him this picture. Alex is a huge fan of Dr. Barry, so he got a kick out of Dr. Barry uh. seeing this picture. But Dr. Barry guessed the same thing as you did. And then I said to Dr. Barry, I'm like, isn't it amazing, Dr. Barry, how carnivore reverses aging? And he gave me his Dr. Barry finger that he has in all his thumbnails. Uh-uh-uh. No, no. He was like, Carrie, I don't think that's what's happening. This is what a proper 65 year old would look like if they just ate the food they're supposed to eat i'm like yes that's so clear that's so smart that's dr barry for you every time you watch one of his videos you're like duh yeah and i've i've had people and myself where people were starting to go gray and then they started eating only carnivore and it stopped yep and same for me. I was I was having those discussions with my uh, my stylist. Okay, I need to start putting it in the budget to start dyeing my hair because I've never dyed my hair. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to start managing this and I'm going to have to stay on top of it so I don't get these roots and everything. And he was like, okay, I think you've got another, you know, six months or so. And then I started eating carnivore and it's just like, I'm fine. <laughs> it's crazy. I had a little white spot, like a patch, and that's gone. And then... Um, my friend Dave Mack, he uh, he did a video a while back. He had a literal like bald spot, 
and he had it on video. So people were like, oh, it's Photoshop. It was video and it's it's filled in. Wow. It's so, you feel I feel weird sometimes talking about this because all the carnivores are like, yep. But anyone that's not carnivore, they're like, these guys are full of it. Oh, you reverse bald and you did this. You did yeah. that. And my favorite is my teeth. Like, that's the craziest. My teeth and my gums. Like, you know how like before you would just like feel like you have like sweaters on your teeth and now they're just like clean all the time. Like, it's just crazy. It's nuts. I, I Again, you're like my it's like you're <laughs> taking your the words you're my twin yeah my carnivore twin i went into a dentist appointment i don't know day 50 of carnivore and i had so many bad teeth problems before i'm like i'm gonna have so many cat i hadn't gone in in years it was bad and i'm like i'm gonna have so many cavities i went in i had I, i'm not saying that all this reversed on carnivore i don't know what happened but i didn't have any cavities but the the dental hygienist was like what are you eating i'm like oh that's weird why and she's like because when you have inflammation, when you have inflammation in your body, it shows in your gums. That's where it shows first. And if you have it in your gums, it's everywhere. And she's like, everyone I see nowadays, they have inflammation in their gums and it's bleeding and you have none of that. So what are you eating? And then I told her it was carnivore. And this is the coolest thing. She was a carnivore too. Oh. They are out there. They're everywhere. These carnivores are. And they're, they don't talk about it because they're so scared about it or whatever. Yeah. Like, you, why you talk about it. Everyone tells you you're crazy. So. That was really cool. We, and then we talked for like an hour. She's like, yeah, my husband's been doing it. I've been doing it for a while. She's like, this is so crazy. I'm meeting another carnivore in person. That's so cool. I I don't think I've ever met another one in person. They're out there. And so my wife and I, I'm in the basement of our small town movie theater. We purchased this small town movie theater a year ago. It's just a single screen theater. And I've been doing YouTube videos. But every weekend now, it's more and more people coming up to me. I saw your video. I'm a carnivore. I'm like, speak up. Why are we whispering? It's like been like four or five people all the time over and over again. I'm, I really think carnivore is exploding out there now because so I did it and both of my sisters did it. My mom and my stepdad are doing it and two of my daughters are doing it. And and now my mom's doing it. So now she's like an example and she's been doing it for like 150 days now. It's not like she just started a week ago. She's stuck. She's like, I'm doing this for life. And um, she had some bipolar stuff, too, and a bunch of other things. And all of it's reversed. But now people are seeing her and now they're doing it. They're doing it. Anyways, I think it's going like wildfire. It's just people don't talk about it. They're they're scared to talk about it because you get you get the weird looks and you got to explain yeah. yourself. It's not worth explaining it. So it's not. I just enjoy my life. I'm just grateful. Yes. Well, this has been awesome. Man, I'm, I should have asked you. We went way over an hour or two or an hour and I'm a half. Cool. That just flew by. You see, I love how you're ending it. You're grateful. Um, that's my friend Jeff with the stage four cancer. He has a channel. It's called Blessings on My Journey. And I said, yes. why did you call it that? And he said, I look at every single thing since I started Carnivore as a blessing with stage four cancer. He's grateful for everything. And that's the I, I've been adopting that more and, and so thankful for Jeff. He's been a really good friend and I've been learning from him. And I'm, I was pretty grateful before this, but so much more now, like ev everything, like how, how can you not be, you, you, you're in the moment and you're more present. You can realize well, it. More and too. to be honest with you, Carrie, bipolar was the best thing that ever happened to me. Like best thing, because if I was just like one of those people who just had like a little bit wrong with me, I don't think I would have jumped in the deep end. Right. I was so miserable that I couldn't, I couldn't exist one more day in that torture. So it was, it was my gift. And then to have the multiple sclerosis that kept me on target. Like I was like, I don't want to not be able to walk again. So multiple sclerosis and bipolar were my gift. So look at, I think people should look at their disease as their gift because it literally is it's your body giving you a signal and going hey baby you got to change something mm -hmm. and so just listen to that and embrace that gift and 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 really nurture it like nurture the gift nurture what it's telling you to do and do some grounding and eat some steak yeah be a natural proper human you'll feel better for sure <laughs> This has been so much fun. Thank you, Emily. Everyone check out Emily, Emily Penton. And I want to talk to you more if you're interested because we're doing this carnivore diet documentary. And right here, 
is the mental health section. I'm and there. Yeah, I would love to talk to you some more. Your story is incredible. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll end it with there. And good job, Emily. Amazing. Like, look what you've done. That's just incredible where you've come. And it's you. You made the decision. You did it. That's the hardest part of carnivore for so many people. And now look where you've come from there. And not only what you've done for yourself, but now you're helping mm -hmm. hopeless people. What what bigger calling in the world is there than that? It's just amazing. Life changer for sure. So thank you so much, Emily. Thank you, everyone, for all the nice comments and super chats. We really appreciate it. And uh, everyone have a good night. Bye.